Continuing now on Newsmax Prime, we can tell you the search for a cop killer ended earlier today as authorities in Iowa capture a man suspected of killing two police officers early this morning via ambush. The officers gunned down while sitting in their patrol cars in what is being called unprovoked ambush. Police say it's unclear what provoked the attacks. Uh, for more on this disturbing story, we are joined tonight by former NYPD Commissioner Bernard Carrick. Bernie, of course, the author of the book, From Jailer to Jailed. He joins us from New Jersey. Bernie, it seems more often than not we get together to talk about another instance of uh, violence against police officers. This year, 14 officers have been ambushed. What do you think is behind this spike in these type of ambushes of law enforcement officers? Well, I think a lot of it, J.D., has to do with the anti-police rhetoric that we've heard over the last year, year and a half, almost two years now. And this year, over last year, there's about a 300% increase in these types of ambushes. Uh, there's about a 60% increase in, in cops getting gunned down uh, over last year. Um, we continue to see this rise. We continue to see these spikes. Um, tragic, uh, insane uh, execution type uh, events. Uh, this should not happen, but um, I, I have to believe it has a lot to do with the, the political rhetoric, the anti-cop rhetoric. Um, this guy uh, that killed these two cops or allegedly killed the two cops, he was known to law enforcement uh, out in Iowa. He had, had uh, recently had a few incidents, uh, one of which they threw him out of a, a game for waving a Confederate flag in somebody's face at the game. And um, it probably had to be a deranged individual if, in fact, he did this. Uh, so there are two questions. One is about morale nationwide for the police. And the other question being, in the wake of this, especially of this incident, incident do, do local law enforcement officials have to have more active surveillance or research on those whose behavior might indicate uh, abiding hostility uh, toward those in law enforcement? Well, uh, look, J.D., uh, you know, you have, to, you have to look at what's happened in this country over the last few years with regard to police events. Um, we've had government leaders uh, attacking uh, police agencies around the country. Um, they've, uh, you know, identified them as biased or racist or, you know, claimed that they were uh, targeting minorities when, in fact, uh, it was basically these are false narratives uh, produced by the media, produced by political leaders trying to get their name, uh, name in lights, if you will. Um, you know, in the morale for the cops, the everyday cop that goes out there and puts his life on the line for these communities, uh, it's pretty low. Uh, you know, these the, these men and women don't get paid enough. I don't care what department you're in. You don't get paid enough to put your life on the line in the ways they are now. And, um, you know, they need all the support they can get by their local, state, and, and federal uh, political leaders. Bernie, you made mention of those in positions of power. Indeed, uh, many would say our current commander-in-chief, among those who perhaps has rhetorically given credence to the hostile environment that law enforcement officials face, those who aspire to succeed Barack Obama in the Oval Office, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, reacted to today's news via Twitter. Uh, first, uh, Hillary Clinton's response is as follows, Heart, heartbroken for the families of the two brave officers who were killed in Iowa. There's no justification for this violence. And then Trump tweets out, praying for the families of the two Iowa police who were ambushed this morning. An attack on those who keep us safe is an attack on us all. With that in mind, and an election six days away, what is your take on those two responses? The, the response by Secretary Clinton is a response that you would want to hear uh, all the time. It's a response, uh, you know, you would want her to be supportive, to give the men and women in law enforcement the, the benefit of the doubt, 
uh, when there's a, uh, an event in question. However, she does not do that. She never has, does not do it. Um, Donald Trump, on the other hand, is 110% pro-law enforcement, supports them, backs them up. And I think as president, he will give them the support and, and the, uh, the, the benefit of the doubt uh, when they need it um, to do their job. They need resources. They need support. Uh, and that's something they haven't had in a long time. And I don't think we need four more years of what we've had over the last eight and uh, law enforcement uh, is playing uh, playing a role in this campaign. FBI Director James Comey's decision to reopen the investigation to Hillary Clinton's emails took us by surprise last Friday. And a man with whom I served in Congress, former House Majority Leader Tom DeLay, says the push to reopen this investigation was not due to Comey's integrity. Let's listen and look at the way Tom DeLay put it. Almost a hundred agents were threatening Comey that they were going to re resign, and that kind of pressure uh, uh, is what turned him around. It wasn't Comey or his integrity. I don't know what his integrity is. I know he made a huge mistake when he indicted Clinton not to be indicted, indicting her. Uh, but now he's trying to turn that around, and of course he had to do it now or have all these FBI agents uh, resign. Uh, Bernie, have you heard talk within the FBI? Um, is there some credence to the observations Tom DeLay just made there? Well, I know a lot of guys were uh, disappointed with uh, the way uh, uh, Director Comey handled the uh, this event back in July. Uh, but I, I have to tell you, J.D., I don't think he had a choice in making this notification of Congress. I just don't. Um, if this would have leaked out, uh, you know, he made the notification on Friday. By Sunday, they actually had a warrant for this device, uh, for this uh, laptop that has supposedly has 650,000 emails in it. If they get that warrant on Sunday and he had not notified Congress that they were back up and looking into this, he would have been crucified. So I, I think he was stuck between a rock and a hard place. He can't let this go. Uma Abedin has already said that that was not hers. Uh, she didn't have that the device or it's, she didn't put those emails in it or whatever the case may be. And if that's, if that's true, there's a much bigger issue here than anybody's looking at because this is a major national security breach that Anthony Weiner had a device with 650,000 emails in it and Uma Abedin is saying it's not hers. It is a major national security issue, but the current president, who was on the stump for Hillary yesterday in Columbus, Ohio, really tries to spin out of this. Let's listen to President Obama on the stump trying to make the case for Secretary Clinton. Has she made mistakes? Of course, so have I. There's nobody in the public arena over the course of 30 years that doesn't make some. But she is a fundamentally good and decent person who knows what she's doing and will be an outstanding president. You, you know, you hear that. If, if push comes you to know, shove with this, well, go ahead, Bernie, 30 seconds you know for your what? response. I, I find that completely comical. There's a bunch of people sitting in prison today, hundreds, thousands of them, that made mistakes, good people, decent people that made mistakes, not one thousandth of a percent of what she has, supposedly, uh, these mistakes she made, that she lied about, that she suppressed, that she concealed, that she destroyed evidence. Um, there's people sitting in prison today, and, you know, she hasn't been touched. I just, uh, it, it's, it's appalling to somebody like me. Anybody that's been in my position to watch this thing unfold, it's appalling and it's outrageous. And it makes us all wonder what happened to the observation equal justice under law. Bernie Carrick, we thank you very much for your time tonight from New Jersey. Still to come, Trump is up, the Dems are panicking, and our political panel is standing by with their observations on all of this. That and more as Newsmax Prime continues.